it is often widely agreed that the animals and plants that live in one habitat are fitting to live there and that they may not be able to survive in other habitats. As a habitat changes, the animals and plants that live there will change too. These features that allow them to live in these environments are called adaptations and are necessary for their survival. This is due to species being naturally selected and then these features being inherited for generations. What is deemed the fittest can often change. A classic example is shown by the melanistic phenotype of the peppered moth, which increased in Britain following the Industrial Revolution, but then declined again once such covered buildings and trees disappeared. This is because the dark morph camouflaged better in the environment than the traditional light-coloured phenotype. Some traits may be a function of history rather than adaptation. For instance, the giant panda's pseudothumb, which now functions as an opposable thumb for holding bamboo. However, the ancestors of the giant pandas and closely related species also have sesamoid bones, which are also used for feeding, but not on bamboo. Therefore, the pseudothumb is not an adaptation to feeding on bamboo. Some features may also be a necessary consequence or constraint. One of the most common forms of constraint involves the function of anatomical traits that differ in size. For instance, whilst the canines of carnivores are larger than those of herbivores due to diet, the size of the canine teeth is also related to the overall body size. Many characteristics such as the size of young, duration of developmental periods, and the sizes of tree leaves are all related to physical size constraints.